Welcome to The Chase Hudson Show, a podcast dedicated to inspiring you to become extraordinary. Each week, we sit down with top-tier business owners, real estate investors, and influencers to inspire you to build your legacy. It's time to level up. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Chase Hudson Show. Today, we have Jeremy Lieber, who is the founder of Uncommon Education Trading a day trading education platform which teaches individuals to profit on the stock market it's uh it's it's a really interesting conversation i myself am you know newer to to options trading and it's really cool to hear jeremy break it down uh and how how you can create uh profit and income from uh from doing something that uh you know is, is not not something that a lot of people know so he walks us through it he's got a great platform um and excited to to kind of talk through his story with you guys so with that let's jump right in Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Chase Hudson Show. Today we have Jeremy Lieber. He is the founder of Uncommon Education Trading, a day trading education platform which teaches individuals to profit on the stock market through short-term trading strategies, which Jeremy will jump into. Um, In addition to Uncommon Education, Jeremy is a VP of Sales at Proof Pest Control. So with that, thanks for being here, Jeremy. Yeah, happy to be here. Thanks yeah. for having me. Of course, man. I'm glad we could do this. Um, so we connected, I think it was John Taylor who I had on here. And yes. you, you and John know each other somewhat. Yeah, we have played uh, many, many hours of golf together. Okay. I uh, grew up in the same neck of the woods up in Davis County. So yeah, really good friend John is. Good deal. Yeah, he's a total stud. So uh, any friend of John is a friend of mine. So I'm glad to have you on here, man. Um, well, first thing I usually like to ask guests is just to tell us a little about your upbringing, you know, cool. childhood years, uh, high school, early days, and, and trying to help us understand, you know, your, your very entrepreneurial mindset, maybe where, where that stem from or any experiences you could share would be, would be awesome, man. For sure. Um, yeah. So I grew up in Farmington, Utah. Um, I would say probably on the lower end of middle class, um, you know, had enough money to play sports and whatnot, but a lot of hand-me-down um, things. And yeah, I never really, you know, saw any type of luxury, I guess, growing up. Sure. But uh, I'll tell you what, my parents, they they did it right. Um, I was not the easiest kid to deal with growing up, um, but they always had such a cool approach to helping raise me where my mom was extremely, you know, forgiving and just kind of positive in all situations. And my, my dad was very much a dreamer, you know, whatever you want to do, you can do it. Um, never pushed anything one direction or the other, just kind of let me grow into, you know, who I am today. So it was, it was really cool. Honestly, I had a great upbringing, um, loved sports and just kind of my nature has always been a super happy guy. I've just always loved life. I don't know. There's, uh, very few times in my life I can look back on and feel like, man, I just was not having a good time. Um, and so what that did through high school played sports, um, honestly, I struggled a lot in school. Um, I'm a very logical thinker. And so when I'm sitting in like a history class learning about the civil war or in math class, learning about imaginary numbers, I would just check out because I'm like, there's sure. no application to this in my life. Yeah. And I can't imagine it ever making an impact in my life. So barely made it through high school. Honestly, yeah. um, I graduated and was scrubbing yoga mats on the final day of high school to get a D in my yoga class because I skipped sure. all my yoga classes to go golfing and, you know, do fun <laughs> things. <laughs> so um, from there, I, I went to Southern Virginia University for one semester and um, played football out there and yeah. basically got a good enough grade to be on the football team. And that was my only, only goal. So my, my education is very limited because even, you know, the education I did do, I, I didn't really try too much. Sure. Um, and then from there, uh, the desire to, you know, kind of do my own thing and, and find something outside of your typical nine to five or, um, your typical, you know, what, the public school system or education system teaches, mm-hmm. uh, led to, after I got home from my mission, I served a mission for the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Um, I got into door door sales, um, pretty much right after that. And I liked the fact that there was unlimited earning potential, Loved the fact that there was, um, opportunity for growth without, you know, having like a bachelor's degree. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that kind of led me into, um, the sales world, which was awesome. Um, really, you know, just loved all aspects of it, loved the comp 
competition, competitive aspect of sales, loved that I could, you know, work harder than others and get paid for that effort Mm -hmm. um, and just kind of had a knack for it. So over five years of running teams and, you know, doing sales on the pest control side, um, during that whole time, I was trying to figure out how to day trade. Got it. And I tell people there's really no like noble reason why I learned to day trade. You know, some people are like, oh, it's too inspire. It really was. I thought to myself, what is the easiest way to make money? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I was like, these people who are in the stock market, I don't know how they're doing it. But they're clicking buttons for a few hours a day, making you know, millions of dollars. Like I want to learn how to do that. So my whole time in the door door space, I started investing and trying to figure out how to, how to day trade the stock market. As you can imagine, the first few years went horribly, Uh (laughs) lost a lot of money, (laughs) a lot of just, you know, man, this is way over my head. Again, I don't come from like an accounting background. I was never good at math. Math was my worst subject in school. And over time, I just, I don't know what it was. I guess it was the end goal, the the lifestyle that it could bring. I, I love hobbies. Like the majority of my day is spent doing hobbies, golfing, fly fishing. Um, I just got back from a 10 day trip in Columbia, fly fishing in the, you know, Amazonian jungle. Wow. Um, I try to golf, you know, all over the, the country and, and world, um, different courses, different things. And so that was like the main goal was like, Hey, I want to get to the point where I can work for a very short amount of time and kind of do things that I love with the rest. So over that five year stretch, about year three, I started to develop a few profitable strategies through just lots of studying research on my own, different groups I was a part of. And then um, over the last three years or so have really succeeded with these strategies. Um, And as you know, the stock market has been very different over the last few years. Pre-COVID, everything just went straight up. Post COVID, everything's pretty much gone straight down. Yeah. Um, but the strategies that I developed work in either um, scenario. It's a very unbiased trading strategy. And so from there, then kind of a little bit more of a noble purpose came into play where I thought, you know what, this is pretty cool. I don't consider myself a really like studious or smart guy. Like if I can learn this, I'm sure there are tons of other people who would love to learn how to do this skill. And so that's sure. where kind of the birth of uncommon education trading came from. And, um, making a very uncommon skill set like day trading um, applicable to everyone. So that's, that's kind of where it started. Love it, man. That's that's great background and a lot lot to dive in there. Um, starting with your, yeah, your, your pest control, you know, so so you said you decided to go into pest control because of a couple of reasons. It's competitive, unlimited, you know, earning potential. Mm-hmm. You, st- you started with Green X. That, or Green yeah. X, that was the first group you started with. Yep. Green X, uh, good friend, uh, Mason Bodie, who's still in the industry right now. Okay. Um, and uh, he's a president of sales at a solar company. Uh, he brought me in, said, hey, man. And I think he told me I could make like $30,000 in a, in a summer. Mm-hmm. And I was just shocked, right? Like at the time I'd just been married. I was living at my grandpa's cabin in Lehigh, Utah, right on the uh, Utah Lake, yeah. kind of um, the uh, north end of it. Uh, just, it's kind of a rundown spot. It was like well water to shower with, super gross, like you couldn't mm-hmm. drink it. Mm-hmm. And we were just like chilling, like we didn't know any different, me and my wife. So $30,000 was like... Yeah. mind boggling number. Um, so that's initially what got me into wanting to do pest control. Um, and then, yeah, that first summer I went out to Columbus, Ohio and, um, had a, had a fun first year in, in pest Good. control sales. Good. So how long are you, were you with Green X? So I was with Green X for five years. Um, and during that time was everything from sales rep to, um, in the off season, like inbound call center retention rep. Mm-hmm. A um, few summers would help out on like the operation service side when we'd have issues, you know, on on that end and eventually got to the point where um, I was managing a few different teams um, on, in that last year um, over that five year stretch. Got it. And then you transitioned since to proof pest control. Yeah. So okay. proof pest control, um, really different model from most companies in the industry. Most pest control companies are very much focused on. Um, account acquisition, you know, um, basically the more accounts you can put on, the better, Mm -hmm. um, very aggressive pay for sales reps, right. Things of that nature. And it's a, most models are a built to sell type of model. Proof pest control is a lot different where they care very much about their bottom line. Um, they're a very profitable business, um, and grow very slowly for those who know pest control. They open about a branch a year 
which is very slow in most pest control worlds. Um, but they maintain a crazy level of profitability on um, the revenue they do. And um, my role being over the sales program now enables me to kind of take those five, six years of experience running and managing teams successfully at GreenX um, on a company-wide level with Proof. Okay. So your role, so yeah, maybe dive into your role a little bit more at Proof. What What is your day-to-day -day look like? What, what are you responsible for? Yeah. So um, overall, okay. it's um, the sales production that Proof brings on. Okay. Um, and so everything from the door-to-door -door program, incentives, competitions, which again, I love and try to make it, you know, very fun. Sales is a difficult job in general. Door-to-door -door sales is very difficult. Oh, yeah. um, so, you know, one of the key components to success is making it fun for people. So yeah, working a lot in, you know, ways to incentivize our sales reps beyond just their normal pay. Um, I'm responsible for all the training program and materials that um, we, you know, provide to our sales reps and ultimately make sure that um, our sales force is receiving the uh, training attention, um, you know, any help that they need during the summer months. Good deal, man. That yeah. sounds fun. And how are you, how are you splitting your time right now between proof and uncommon? Like what's, yeah, what's your balance there? So I, I get this question um, quite a bit. And honestly, for me, um, so I, I, I turned 31 today, actually. Today's That's my right. birthday. Happy birthday. Thank man. you. Appreciate it. Um, I feel like I just, I have a lot left in the tank. Um, I'm, I, I work a lot. Um, work's kind of my life right now. Um, but just with the way that the stock market's set up, most of my uncommon education trading you know, work happens before most people are even waking up. Sure. You know, I'm, I'm in and out done with content, everything by eight 30 every morning. And then from there, just, you know, your normal, you know, proof day, um, comes Got about it. and happens. Um, the nice thing in the door to door world is your schedule is very fluid. And a lot of the things that are, you know, done in, um, door to door sales from a recruiting aspect or making sure the sales reps are happy are fun things, right? Mm -hmm. So taking guys golfing, taking guys fishing, you know, taking potential new um, sales reps to, you know, to dinners, things of that nature. Yeah. So even though I'm very busy, um, it's, it's a lot of fun um, what I'm doing day to day. Cool. Awesome, man. Well, let's, yeah, love to dive more into uncommon education trading. So um, sounds like the idea initially was you wanted more of a passive income you know, uh, path to freedom, path to just building wealth on the side and, mm -hmm. and growing that. And I, I'm glad you brought that up because I think a lot of entrepreneurs, um, in addition to wanting to build something and just a natural drive to like create, I think second to that is really, I, I want freedom, you know, time freedom. I want to be able to choose and kind of dictate like wh where I spend my time, how, I, how I allocate it. Sure. Um, and, and so I, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. So yeah, let's dive into the kind of the founding. So when did you start, uh, your, your trading experience? Like you mentioned the first few years are rough, mm -hmm. maybe dive, dive into a little bit more of that initial timeline, why you wanted to do it. And then the first couple of years of, of the battle of trying to figure it out. Cool. So yeah, again, you gotta imagine coming from somewhere where to this day, I, I still can't like solve a long division math problem. Like I, I, I do not know how to do that without a calculator. <laughs> right, I understand. I've forgotten how to do that. I'm sure as well. <laughs> so, it's all Excel and calculators. Exactly. Now. Especially in today's <laughs> world. So when I, when I got into it, all I knew is that it was happening, right? I didn't know how it was happening, but I knew that people were doing it. And like most things I, that I've found in life, most things appear, um, much different than they actually are. Um, I very much believe that, you know, the, the wealthy, the powerful people, you know, in the world today, um, they just are, they're not afraid to, to try things, right? They're not afraid of something that seems maybe super difficult or insurmountable. And at the time it did, it seemed like when I look at like stock trading charts and things, it looked like I was looking at the matrix, right? Just yeah. like this unreadable code. Sure. So those first few years, a um, huge mistake that I made is I just went in with a lot of money. Like all the money I had to my name through door to door, I was just putting into the stock market, which is, you know, very much not the way to do it. But um, it was cool because when I had a lot on the line, it was very much like a, you need to figure it out or you're going to, you know, you're going to get burned. Yeah. And I did get burned a few times. But during that time, I guess how I learned the skill set was a lot of YouTube videos. Um, YouTube, as you know, is a wealth of knowledge. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. Um, I was a part of a few different stock trading groups that 
didn't really teach much. Um, most of the things that are out in the world today, they, they kind of try to give you enough information to stick around and try to trade, but they don't want to tell you everything because mm-hmm. they want to like keep you involved in their groups. Got it. Um, so yeah, honestly, it was just a lot of losing money, frustrations, feeling like I kind of was getting something figured out, but then the, the stock market would change and I, you know, wouldn't know how to react to it. Yeah. So yeah, it was rough for those first couple of years. So when you first started, what was the strategy? I mean, I know I hear a lot about like options trading, mm-hmm. derivatives, like were you, when you first getting started, was it like, hey, I'm gonna, I don't know, dude. Yeah, describe like what you were trying to do yeah. those first couple of years. So options trading is um, what I do and that's where I started. Um, because okay. options trading allows you to capitalize on smaller moves in the stock market and make pretty good money with lower capital, right? Mm-hmm. Like less money to start with. So, you know, if you were just day trading like actual stock equity, you're gonna need hundreds of thousands of dollars to really even move the needle um, sure. in like a intraday or within the day scope of the stock market. Where options trading, we have people at Uncommon Education Trading who start with 250 bucks wow. and can start seeing like $20 days, you know, $30 profit days, which obviously isn't crazy, but it's it's something. And so options trading attracted me in that sense. Um, also the fact that with options trading, you can make money whether the stock goes up or down. Um, it's a very unbiased way to trade if you have the right strategies where, you know, we don't really care which way the stock goes as long as it goes somewhere. We just want it to go yeah. up or down. And so that's those two things logically made sense to me. It's like, well, yeah, I want to I want to start with less. And two is, well, yeah, I'd, I'd love to make money whether stock goes up or down because it's not always just going to go straight up or not always right. going to go down. So that's kind of my the reason why I chose options trading. Got it. And backing up a little bit, you know, when you were it sounded like you, uh, sorry, sorry. When again, did you start on common? What, what, about what um, so officially, um, uh, about 18 months ago, 18 months ago. Mm-hmm. And then when did you start trading or getting into the stock market? So stock market, I started, um, six years ago, six years ago. Okay. Mm-hmm. So is that when you were proof or you're still with green? X uh, still, with still with green X. Yeah. Still with green X at that time. Um, and again, you know, I'd go out and, you know, make a decent amount of money during the summer and then that mm-hmm. pretty much whole you know, September through May of the next year was just grinding, figuring out, you know, what, what type of strategies I wanted to use in the stock market, what had worked for other people, you know, that I'd research and find. And again, that process lasted for a solid three years before I really started seeing like consistent profitable returns. Got it. So why, yeah, why the stock market? Why options? Because I, a lot of um, summer sales individuals, they they make good money, right? Mm -hmm. And they're, they're looking for a place to place it, whether it's in the stock market or real estate or fix and flips or what have you. But when you look at the spectrum of, and even today, like, you know, investment opportunities, what was it about options or stocks that, that caught your eye? Um, so this kind of goes back to a different, um, part of my life right after high school, before my mission, um, I, uh, with a, a handful of friends got involved in penny auctions, which, yeah. um, f- if you don't know what penny auctions are, essentially, it's uh, a website will list an item for sale, let's say an iPad at starting at zero dollars and you can bid one penny at a time. Mm-hmm. And if no one else bids, there's like a countdown clock within 30 seconds of your one cent bid, then you would win that iPad for one cent. Wow. But obviously, um, you know, there's thousands of people bidding on this thing. And so some lucky winner may get the iPad for, you know, 11 bucks or something, but the people selling it are making, you know, quadruple what the iPad actually costs on it. Okay, sure. Um, so that kind of got me exposed to um, the idea of just making money through um, the internet and making money through, um, you know, like penny stocks and, and kind of that penny auction site got me interested in penny stocks where, you know, there's these stocks in the stock market. Like a few years ago, a lot of uh, cannabis stocks were very, you know, low mm-hmm. price and shot up, you know, when started becoming legal um, throughout the, the yeah. U.S. Um, and so the, the potential return logically just made sense for, again, my initial reason for wanting to do it. So I'm like, okay, if I get into real estate and own a rental property and let's say I'm net profiting 300 bucks a month on like a good rental property, sure. if I can make that with a thousand dollars in my trading account, trading options in a morning, 
like why would I not do that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Logically, right. and and it, again, the the success rate obviously very illogical of me to think that, but that's just how my brain operated. I was like the the return is so much greater. Maybe harder to figure out how to do it, but like I'm willing to do whatever to get to the point where yeah. it's it's a reality. That makes sense. And I I think the other aspect of that too is. Um, and you kind of see, you see it on Instagram or online, but like, like day trading is very mobile. Like you can be on a beach, you can be on a fly fishing trip, you can log on to your computer and it's like, you spend an hour, boom, and you're, you're moving on. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's another pretty appealing thing when I've looked at it or seen, seen people do it. So ma that makes sense. I mean, logically I, I can see why you, you went down that route. Sure. Um, okay. So you spend a few years just kind of getting beaten up by mm -hmm. the stock market. What was it that, what was kind of the catalyst or changing point? How did you develop kind of that skill set to, to be, to be more successful repetitively? Yeah. So, um, and this is, this is pretty funny to think about. Um, I'm, I'm a, I'm a gambler by nature. Like okay. I, I like taking, I don't know, calculated risks, let's call it. Sure. Whether that's in a casino, in the stock market, um, investing in different businesses, whatever. Like if if I feel like I have an edge, like I'm willing to, you know, be be aggressive in, yeah. in that assumption. And so I think when it came to where I don't know, kind of the turning point for me was understanding that if you if you understand day trading and you understand the the principles of buying and selling, just on a very generic basic level, the concept is very simple. Um, and we teach that at, at Uncommon Education where it's like, look, it's actually pretty simple, the, the idea behind it. Where it's so difficult and where so many people fail is they lack two things, and that's um, self-control, right? Their emotions get in the way and just discipline. And so for me, um, who has large in part my whole life lived a very undisciplined life, um, I realize, you know what, if I'm ever going to get good at this and actually make it consistently consistent, um, as far as, um, my profitability, my success, I need to change some things and I need to become more disciplined. And it didn't mean I, you know, started, you know, waking up at 4am and making my bed and, you know, hitting the gym twice a week, you know, or twice a day for, you know, ever. Sure. But it really was just, okay, I need to be disciplined in, you know, the strategy I'm using. I need to have some aspects of discipline in my life. And what that did is it took out a lot of the emotion behind day trading because a lot of day trading is just being really good at losing. Mm -hmm. You just have to become an incredibly good loser um, mm -hmm. to, to succeed in the stock market. And so once you're disciplined, um, the, the losses don't hurt as bad. Um, you, you know, minimize these losing experiences opposed to, you know, maximizing them. And ultimately that discipline led to, okay, let's fine tune a strategy. Let's find exactly what I'm looking for on an entry. Whereas maybe before that I was kind of just going off a of feel and like, oh yeah, I, I think this looks good. Or I think this now it's like, if this happens, I do this. If that happens, I do that. Got and it. so just that discipline aspect really was the turning point for me. I, yeah, I, I really like that, Jeremy. And, and you mentioned discipline. Um, I, I've noticed in my life in the, in the periods <clears throat> where I, things have just kind of been go with the flow, like no structure, mm -hmm. no schedule, it's just kind of like whatever. That has a ripple effect in in kind of everything, every aspect of your life, right? Like how, you, how your job's going, how your work's going, your relationships, um, your success. And so... You, you, you know, I think having some discipline or structure, not only just in your work, but in your life will, will create a lot more opportunities for success and just create like a mind shift, mind shift, uh, or mindset shift where you can really dial in a little bit across the board within your life. And so it's, it kind of sounds like that's what you went through. 100%. And for those who know me, or if you follow me on social media, you'll see like, I'm a very easygoing, like laid back, chill type of person. That's just who I am. That's how I've always been. Um, but even someone like me, you can find aspects in your life where you can be disciplined and it's incredible. The, the outlook and, and just how things change. Um, when you just, again, have that little bit of discipline. Um, I do think there's on the flip side, you can be too structured where, you know, you need to be fluid. You need to be willing to kind of accept things as they come. I know a lot of people who are very almost robotic with the way yeah. they um, are with their discipline, but yes, discipline, just in the sense of, you know, if, if you feel like you can be in control of a scenario um, and you aren't dictated by, um, for day trading, for example, like if I don't want to trade one day, I'm perfectly fine not touching the stock market screen, right? And not yeah. entering a trade. Or, you know, if I feel like one day I'm not feeling super good, so I'm going to trade with less money that day because I know maybe mentally I'm not really up to it. 
I need to be disciplined enough to actually execute and follow through with that. So when you have that discipline, day trading or in life, um, you're typically going to find more success. Love it, man. So talk us through a typical day in the, the stock market, in the trading world. So yeah, yeah when, when you wake up, how much you're investing on a day, like what are you looking for? Mm -hmm. I, that would be super interesting to hear. Cool. So um, this is going to be different for everyone, um, but what we teach Uncommon Education and what I you know, kind of pride myself on is I trade for less than an hour a day. Okay. So the stock market opens at 7.30 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, and I am done, logged off most of the time before 8 a.m. So it's just 7.30 to 8. We capture that morning momentum that happens in the stock market, and I'm done. And I'll never go past 8.30. So that's kind of my time limit. Got it. Now there's obviously a lots of opportunities in the stock market after that, but I want my time. I want my freedom. So I'm yeah. okay missing out on whatever happens after that. So I'll typically wake up, um, anywhere from five 30 to five 45. Um, I'll hop on to, um, you know, the stock market trading platform, which we use and, uh, kind of scan typical stocks that we're looking at. And I trade all blue chip stocks, you know, S and P 500 stocks, Apple, Amazon, Google, Tesla, things like that. Um, and so during that time between, you know, roughly 6 a.m. till 7, I am sending out potential plays to our members at Uncommon Education. Okay. So we have an education library where I teach the exact strategies, right, that, that we use, the if this happens, do this, if that happens, do that, exactly how to mitigate risk. If you're, you know, in a trade, how much money to use according to, how much money you have in your trading portfolio. I mean, everything A to Z, we, we teach it. And so the potential plays I'll send out each morning are based on those strategies that we teach in the course. Um, for example, this morning, if we say, hey, Tesla is nearing a support level, and if we touch this level, um, the stock price, and we get some type of bounce with these indicators confirming, this is a great um, place to enter calls, which in options trading means we believe the stock's gonna go up. So I'll send a handful of those out each morning. Stock market bell opens 7.30. Um, I live trade with our members, um, something that not a lot of people do. So I'll actually share my screen with them so they can see what I'm doing, mm. kind of put my money where my mouth is, yeah, you know, I'm kidding. a lot, a lot of the, you know, stock trading world, they'll, you know, teach these things, but very few people actually like implement it. Okay. So I, I let them see my screen. I show them, Hey, here's exactly why I'm entering where I'm entering. And then, yeah, usually done by eight, eight fifteen, um, and then I'll, you know, maybe record a video or two of what happened in the market that day mm -hmm. for content. Um, from there, I'll usually run over to the gym by my house, get a quick workout in, grab a protein shake, and then I'm off um, working with Proof and wow. helping build their sales force. That's great. Yeah. Oh, I love it. So, if you maybe just as example, I'd love to hear like a like a trade, like something you've either done recently or even hypothetically, <clears throat> like. Okay. Okay, guys. Like this is what's this is what we're looking at. This is what's going to happen. Here's what I think you should do, and like how how that would play out for yeah, sure. I think it'd be interesting to hear. So um, obviously, we're we're going to be talking about things that you know are six years you know of of knowledge, and in the course, our goal is to help people get caught up to speed within like a month. So wow. within within a month, they they should know exactly what to look for, how to implement. And then getting good at it just comes from practice and screen time and consistency. Mm -hmm. So uh, an example of something that we do um, is an example this morning of saying, okay, um, Tesla, we have seen previously that Tesla stock buyers have come in and pushed up the stock when it has retraced back to the $180 level. Okay. So let's okay. say the stock's at 185 bucks. So before the stock market opens, we say, cool, if the stock drops down to $180, and we see buyers come in, and again, this is multiple indicators and things we have in our charts that kind of can confirm that um, hypothesis or mm -hmm. that guess. Um, then if we see that, enter the trade. And so if I'm live trading, if that occurs, I will literally, while I'm live trading, be like, okay, I am entering Tesla calls right now. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll click buy and those you know who are on the live trade me trade with me can purchase those or or choose not to and then from there we have strategies as far as if the trade is going the direction we want of kind of how to take profit along the way um, and a lot of it comes down to risk tolerance how much money you have in your trading account type thing um, but typically when we are in winning trades we're seeing returns of anywhere from 10 to 30 percent um, on the money invested in that short 15 to 20 minute window, 
which again is cool in the options world because the stock may only increase by a percent mm -hmm. or maybe half a percent, but the option contract that we're trading um, that's directly associated with Tesla stock may increase by, yeah, 30% in that short 15 minute window. Wow. Um, and then if the trade starts going in the opposite direction, how we don't want it, then we have certain indicators to tell us, hey, the trade is broken, time to get out, you know, accept the loss, move on. Got it. It's very difficult to do, especially for people who don't like to lose. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's something that takes a little while to get used to. Yeah. But that's, a, that's what a typical trade will look like um, with us at Uncommon Education. Cool. And are you doing any sort of um, hedging, like stop loss or like when, like if it hits a certain threshold, auto sell or I guess it's, is it all, ha it's all happening pretty live though, right? So yeah. you're kind of in control. Mm -hmm. You're not like, Hey, let's place a bet, wait a week. Yeah. And then, you know, so that's kind of the cool thing about what, again, I teach too, because even though like I am a gambler by nature, um, and for those who know me, um, I, I very rarely walk away from Vegas down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's because I, I know when to walk away. Like I, I know when, you know, the tables are starting to turn. I know when I don't have that advantage or that edge anymore. And so in the stock market, um, it very much is if we are, you know, in a trade, let's say the worst news ever comes out on Tesla. I keep using Tesla as an example because it's one of the main stocks that we use. Yeah. Like when uh, Elon Musk bought Twitter, that was horrible for Tesla stock. Sure. It plummeted as soon as he announced that, right? So what's cool is because the way that we trade, um, we, you know, let's say we're in calls or we believe the stock's going up. As soon as that news comes out, we have kind of a threshold where it's like, hey guys, if we break below this level, that trade is broken, it's time to get out. And so we only incur a max, you know, 15, 20% loss on that trade mm -hmm. with the money we invest, as opposed to long-term stockholders, they just have to watch their account as money gets drained from it. Yeah. Um, it's the same reason why we never hold positions overnight Okay. because of that very fact. Everything could look amazing. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, overnight, let's say another COVID outbreak happens. Right. Or I remember when the news um, came out that Russia invaded Ukraine, right? things can change drastically overnight. And if you can't sell that position and you're not in control, then you no longer have the advantage. Yeah. So that's another huge reason why we only trade when we are at a screen and when you are in control of when to exit and when to um, either take profit or take a loss. Yeah, makes sense. Because if if not, I mean, your exposure could be pretty, I mean, in some cases, probably unlimited downside exposure to some extent. I don't know if, I don't know if you have any stories of like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> it was like a horrible loss or like sure. something where you were like, Oh my gosh, I don't know if I can recover from this type thing. Yeah. So there, there's a few examples. So one of the, one of the benefits and cool things about options trading is you can never lose more than you invest. So as an example, we teach our members never to trade m with more than 10% of their portfolio on any given trade. Okay. Okay. So if you have $10,000 in your portfolio, our rule is never trade with more than a thousand dollars in any given trade. So if, the stock went, you know, Tesla stock went from $180 to $5 overnight. The max you could lose is whatever you put into the trade. So if you put $1,000 into calls, hoping that the stock would go up, the max you can lose is $1,000. Got it. So you never have to worry about it, like draining your whole account. Okay. Now, if you have $10,000 and you put $10,000 into a trade, then yeah, you can lose whatever you put into the trade. Sure. Example. But yeah, callous examples. Um, and, you know, anyone who trades or is trading in the stock market, making money isn't hard, but keeping the money is what's hard, Yeah, you know? And so, um, the greatest example of this is GameStop, right? Yes. Um, so many, um, you know, retail investors, that's what people who are trading from their phone or, or whatever are mm -hmm. called, um, purchase GameStop stock on that hype. One of the, my favorite documentaries on Netflix, it's called eat the rich. If you haven't watched it, it's unbelievable. I need Just to the whole it. saga, the whole story is so, so cool. But, uh, yeah, that's what happened is these retail investors bought GameStop because of the short squeeze that happened, which essentially just meant um, buyers were pushing it up far beyond what its you know actual value was worth. Um, but they didn't have a stop loss in place. They didn't understand trading fundamentals, and so people were up hundreds of thousands of dollars. Some of which had you know who had invested with a couple thousand, and almost overnight you know would lose half of that um, profit, or in yeah. some cases would lose a hundred percent of that. And so. Um, yeah, there's a multitude of examples of where this happens in the stock market. What we try to do is help people um, understand that you can have it an, an edge and you can still be in a position where you can capitalize on these movements that occur, but doing it 
without gambling, right? With set um, things in place, knowing, hey, it's time, it's time to exit, right? Or hey, we've hit this profit threshold, time to take some profit. Um, and I think that's where um, most people get into trouble is because they don't have those just Got basic it. understandings in yeah. the trading world. That makes sense. What's um what's your average trade? Uh, I guess what what are you typically trading with in your account, and mm -hmm. and what's your typical trade size like for for you? Spending an hour every morning. Yeah. What what does that look like? So I have kind <clears throat> of found a a portion or find a found a balance where you know because really the you you can position size with as much as you want. There's you know government officials, banks that are trading with millions of dollars worth of options in one given trade, right? Mm -hmm. For me, I like to have right around $100,000 in my trading account. Yeah. And from there, I will position size roughly twenty to $30,000 on any given trade. Okay. Um, the reason I do that is because I'm very picky and disciplined at this point as far as like looking for that A plus setup. And so I, I kind of go beyond that 10% threshold as far as what my account balance is. Plus I've, I've got... I guess more capital outside of my trading account. That's just what I keep in the trading account itself. Okay. So then from there, um, you know, if I position size with 20 to 30,000 in any given trade, I'm looking for anywhere from a 10 to 15% return on that trade. And then that's where I will, what's called lock in profit. So I'll, you know, close out 90% of my position and then I'll have kind of 10% left to see if it continues to run and go up or, you know, if it, hits a certain level, then I'll exit out. So yeah, the, the typical, you know, good scenario, I'm making anywhere from 2,500 to $3,000 during that time. If it's a good trade, you know, run up to five or six. If it's a bad trade, you know, it'll come down to, you know, 1,500 in that scenario. And then on the flip side, I'm willing to risk and lose roughly 20% um, on any given trade. Okay. Um, and that's just because at this point, I my my win rate, I, I'm very um, successful as far as, you know, I, I do 100 trades. I'm about an 85% win rate right now. Wow. And that's so great. from there, um, you know, I'm, I'm okay with a, a loss, even if it's slightly larger, like a 20% loss, just because I know over, yeah. you know, <clears> months <throat> or weeks at a time, it's going to come back. So cool. So if you start the year with a hundred grand, mm -hmm. what is your goal? Like for 2023 or maybe last year, whatever, but like, do, do you, are you tracking that? Like yeah. I, this year I want to be up X percent. I want to grow my hundred K to X over the year. What, what does that look like? For sure. So uncommon education, here's what we, here's what we preach and here's what we teach is that if you grow your account by two to 3% a day, which is for those who trade options, unbelievably realistic, okay. two to 3% account growth per day is so realistic. If you do that um, within you know 18 months, your your life's going to be changed. Um, if you do the math um, with fifteen thousand dollars and you compound that by just two and a half percent a day, and you just don't withdraw any money and you just do that, by the end of twelve months, you'll have just over a million bucks. Wow! Just growing at two and a half percent a day. Um, as an example, to close out twenty twenty two, I started an account with uh, twenty four hundred bucks, kind of the average what your typical person starting out would do. Yeah. And um, I think it was mid-November that I did that. And a month later, mid-December, I grew up from 2,400 to 26,000. Dang. Now that was a succession of very successful trades and, and different things that happened, but it was the same strategies that we teach on Common. Um, it was position sizing, you know, not full account in each trade. Yeah. So yeah, the, the potential is, is crazy. But for me, um, where I found I'm comfortable, it doesn't stress me out, you know, with my lifestyle, what, you know, I'm happy with, you know, you can kind of do the math if I'm looking to, you know, be right around that 2,500, 3,000 a day. Um, that's kind of my, I guess, goal, you could say yeah. on a Got weekly it. and monthly basis. So do you have any um, success stories? Sounds like you, Uncommon Education has been around for about 18 months-ish. Mm -hmm. Any students or maybe even yourself, but like, you know, we've, we've been able to help you know, Joe with doing this or that and kind of has it, has it kind of played out the way that you've hoped and had some success stories with some students? Yeah, honestly, even more so. Cause again, I'm, I'm thinking for myself, it took me six years of blood, sweat, yeah. tears, and these people yeah. will come in and they're, they're seeing success in like weeks, like, wow. like two weeks into it. And they're starting to see, you know, <laughs> ridiculous props. I'm like, well, dang, I wish I would have had something like this when I yeah, started. No, no kidding. It saved me a lot of heartache. But uh, yeah, just a few examples. 2022, our best success story. One of our members, um, he profited $150,000 in eight trading days. Wow. 
Wow. Um, so he was, you know, averaging right around 20, 20 grand a day um, doing that, which was really cool. Um, he since has, you know, mellowed out. He's, uh, you know, he ended up losing a little bit of that back because he was, um, I, I always tell people, you know, the story of Icarus, the, the man who flew too close to the sun. Yeah, that, classic. Yes, a classic. <laughs> Tale as old as time. Unfortunately, in trading that happens where you, you kind of feel invincible when you start winning a lot. And inevitably, you know, a, a big loss will come and humble you. Yeah. But, but yeah, this member still is, you know, killing it, averaging, you know, um, he's, he's making a lot of money, probably 50, 60,000 a month right now. Um, we had another member um, just started 2023. Um, he started with $2,000 in his trading account. Um, and halfway through January, he hit $10,000. So he grew his account, you know however many percent growth that is, but mm -hmm. made 8,000 off $2,000. Yeah. Um, another one of our members, really cool. Um, he owns a gym, um, does real estate. Um, obviously with the real estate, how it's kind of flipped the last you know five or six months, mm -hmm. he's struggling. So really dove into day trading and has had back to back, um, I think it's four weeks in a row of $10,000 profit weeks um, wow. trading. So yeah, I mean, we have a lot of different success stories within Uncommon and my favorite part is the diversity. So we have everything from kids who are just getting out of high school, um, stay at home moms. We have a few uh, university professors who will trade with us before they go teach you know, their university classes. Yeah. We have people who are retired in their mid sixties. We have full-time students, um, people like myself in the sales world. And that's really is the beauty of it is it's, it's for anyone and everyone. We have people in the United States, we have people in Canada, in Australia trading with us. And uh, it's, a, it's a really fun community. It's a community where everyone's rooting for everyone's success. And that definitely helps, um, you know, people's motivation and, and inspire um, some of these cool success stories that we've had. That's awesome. So. I mean, that, yeah, I, it, for me, day trading, options trading is, is uh, a newer, you know, I've, I've heard about it. And I want to ask you, so on like Instagram, social media, <clears throat> there's, I feel like there's maybe some sort of stigma of like, oh, like trading options, like get rich quick. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, like maybe it's, it's not seen as like the tried and true method of, as opposed to like, oh, long-term investing. And right. I don't know, do you get any pushback there? Is that something you have to overcome or is it like, hey, whatever, you know, this, I know this works, so. Yeah, good question. Um, <clears throat> I think just skeptical people by nature, when they see something working really well, they're just yeah. gonna have a hard time believing it. <clears throat> Where we really haven't had any pushback or anything, it's just because of the results. Like yeah. if you follow our social media page, Uncommon Education Trading on, uh, on Instagram, every single day we post <laughs> a lot of profits from our members who, you know, we have a profits channel in our group where, you know, they can share their success stories, whatever. Cool. And so, you know, over, over time, you see it just happen over and over and over again. You kind of can't, you know, dispute right. when, when it's, when it's working now, where that comes from is because if you look at the statistics, um, 95%, if you Google, right, how many traders succeed and 90%, 95% of day traders fail. That's what, mm. if you Google right now, that's what it says. But for me, I think, okay, how many of these day traders, right? That 95% are just trading from their Robinhood, you know, app on their phone. Yeah. They hear about a stock, so they buy a bunch of options and they have zero professional training, zero help whatsoever. And they're considering themselves day traders. Yeah. If you were to look at the statistics of people who go through a course like Uncommon Education and understand it, I bet it would be drastically different numbers. And so sure. it's, it's tough to know in that sense. Um, but yeah, no, there's a... It, you know, I, I very rarely tell people, you know, how much I make on a day to day basis um, or even, you know, what my percent growth is because people won't typically believe it. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. it's like you have to kind of help people see some believable results. And then once they get involved, um, even people who end up leaving on common education after a time, there's n we, we've never had someone have a negative like review. Got it. Not, not a single one. That's Everyone's great. like, man, this is incredible. I can't believe it. I don't have time right now. Or, Hey, I actually need this money for other things, but like, I'm going to be back. And so it's, it's a really cool thing that we've been able to, to prove it's, it's validity, but also again, create kind of a more common commonality between it where, you know, years past, it was this very scary foreign yeah. type of type of thing. That's great. I mean, super eye opening <laughs> for me. It sounds extremely, extremely interesting. So, yeah, um, 
in terms of other investments that you're making, mm -hmm. so obviously you've, you're doing a lot of the day trading, and um, but are you are you investing in anything long term in the stock market? And then do you do any alternative uh, real estate or alter, you know other private equity or what have you? Yeah. So um, when I first started um, trading, the two ways that I was able to fund my trading account was through, again, door-to-door um, -door sales, my commissions checks, and real estate. Um, I did Airbnb arbitrage for a while, which um, I'm sure you know, essentially heard, yeah. you rent out uh, a real estate um, location, you have them agree to sublet that to use to where you can rent it out. And, you know, if you get a nice rental in a good location for 1400 bucks a month rent, and you're pulling in $3,000 a month in Airbnb, you split the profits and, you know, you kind of avoid having to own real estate. Yeah. And so at one point um, I had 10 of those properties, which was doing really well. Wow. But then again, what happened is um, I started really succeeding in the stock market. And so I started doing the math in my head and I'm like, okay, I need to spend all my time in the stock market. Right. Interesting. Um, and so now investment wise, um, still buy real estate. I'm still like to find good, you know, buying times where I feel like, you know, I guess you could call it like a flip type strategy where, yeah. you know, I've purchased three different um, properties and have sold them for a nice, you know, um, gain um, over years of just holding that real estate position. Um, I personally am not a um, like a landlord where I own kind of the long term. I know there's a lot of benefit to that. That's just yeah. not my cup of tea. Um, a portion of my income I bring in each month, I will diversify into stocks that I really like long term you know, a portion of it. Um, as much as I do not like crypto, I diversify and invest some money into crypto. Yeah. In my personal opinion, you can't really trade crypto because no one even knows what crypto is. Mm -hmm. Even the people who know what crypto is don't know what crypto is. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so like I, I'm, I'm investing in the sense of like, sure, I would love to see it go up and just skyrocket. Right. Yeah. But it's very much like a, a passive. I'm, I'm, this money is, insignificant enough that if it all just went, you know, down the drain, I, I could care less. Yeah. So doing those types of investments and then really, um, starting to look at, uh, different, you know, businesses that I feel have good opportunity and in, in different things. Um, but for the most part, all the money, um, that, you know, we have coming in, we are investing into, you know, making uncommon education better. We have a lot of really cool, unique things within our group, um, resources for people to make their trading experience that much better. Yeah. Um, and really, again, logically, until we start, or I, I personally start seeing something that gives me as good of returns as the stock market, like that's where my focus is going to be. So makes sense. So uncommon education. How did you get that? So about eighteen months in. Um, how did you get it started and what's the structure like? So do you have, is it just you right now, Jeremy, or do you have partners? Yeah, good question. So I have three other owners who okay. have, um, bought, um, into uncommon education to help me with different aspects of it. Right. Okay. Cause some of you listening to this may be thinking, how is this guy going to run a business? He has no schooling, no education. <laughs> no. Well, one thing that I believe is that if you are not good at certain things, accept that identify what those things are and surround yourself with people who are incredible at those things. So I have a partner, um, Dylan Lewis, he owns Summit Home Loans in Davis County. He is over all the financial legal aspect of Uncommon Education, creating the LLC, making sure, you know, from a tax standpoint, we're good, legally making sure we're covered in all the different, you know, realms of, of the company. Um, Kimber Grazier, she um, is a owner um, with us at Uncommon, she started um, a baby clothing company um, a few years back, um, just recently sold it and did really well with that. So she's helping with kind of the back end marketing strategy, you know, social media team, hiring, things of that nature. And then the fourth owner, um, Jackson Jr., he's actually another um, door to door um, guy in the pest control world. He works for The Grit, um, yeah. Grit Marketing, super awesome guy, super successful there. Um, and he's helping on the sales, kind of um, building out the the customer base side. Cool. And so between the four of us, um, I, I'm a very big believer in the abundance mentality. Like I, I've I've always believed that you have to spend to get. And if you want to get somewhere, like the 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 quickest way to not succeed is to get greedy. And so I I, I try to you know give them enough percentage as owners to where they like feel bought in. And over time, I know that's you know, ultimately going to help me long-term with my freedom aspect, but also just the health and growth of the company. And so that's, um, kind of the team that we have. And then we have, you know, a few other, you know, social media um, individuals who help us out. 
and um, we the way it's set up is through uh, Discord, um, and so it's a uh, private Discord where you can join it for free, but then to get access to everything you purchase, it's either a monthly subscription for um, access to, you know, it's a library of 50 plus educational videos that walk you A to Z. So if you come in to that education course knowing nothing, by the end of it, it's about three and a half hours of content, you will know everything that I know. Wow. Um, and then you'll get access um, to those potential plays um, each morning that we send out. I personally send those out every morning. Um, we send out weekly watch lists as far as certain economic events or earnings reports, things that might affect the stock market, things that might, you know, hey, beware at 10 a.m. today, something is going to happen. It's going to move the market drastically. Yeah. And then um, within this Discord as well, we, you know, give further guidance through, you um, uh, teaching examples of trades I take. And then that's also where I live trade. So where people can hop on. I hop in at 7.30 a.m., share my screen, walk them through the trade as it's happening in real time. They can see me enter with my own money, exit. It's it's pretty cool setup. That's great. Well, I love what you said about not getting greedy. Um, I initially, <clears throat> yeah, you can have the thought of, I, I want to get into this to make money and I want this to be successful. But it, it's, if you can take, you know, maybe up front a little bit of a, you know, you, you take a little bit of a cost up front to bring people in strategically. Mm -hmm. um, the upside hopefully will, will pay off tenfold, right, in terms of structure and strategy. And so super important. And, and at our company, so our real estate investment firm, we're thinking the same way in terms of if, if we have a, a great deal and we need to strategically give up ownership to bring in a, an equity partner or a JV partner, um, if you can get one, two, three under your belt, you know, this guy can be the limit from there. So I think that's, that's great. So what, what's your, what's your plan? I mean, uh, next three to five years between, um, com uncommon and, and proof, are you hoping to go full time kind of with uncommon and day trading or do you, are you planning on stay, sticking around with, with proof? And, and I don't know how much you yeah. can talk about that, but <laughs> no, that's a super good your, question. what your thoughts are there. So, um, one of the huge advantages I believe I have when day trading mm -hmm. is that it's not my only source of income. Yeah. Right. Because if you're trading with rent money, right, if you have a thousand dollars to your name and like, okay, if I fail at trading, I won't be able to pay rent this month. Mm -hmm. You're not going to succeed. Right. Yeah. Because emotionally, you're going to make bad decisions. You're not going to trade the market. You're going to trade based off of, you know, like a fear of, of losing and kind of like the, you know, what happens if it doesn't work out. Yeah. And so one of the one of the things that helps me be successful is, you know, the fact that I have income coming in from other places. Um, so yeah, the, the goal, honestly, long-term is to grow both proof and uncommon to, you know, new heights and, and continue to grow to, um, you know, the, the kind of goals we have within those two companies. Yeah. Um, the nice thing is, is that they, they don't conflict in the sense of time spent, okay. um, That's right. because of, you know, the nature of the stock market being so early morning and, you know, a lot of what happens with proof later on. Um, but, um, the one nice thing I would say about my situation with both is that they, they kind of help each other as well. Mm. So there's a lot of people in the door door space that I've been able to help you know, generate income in the off season when maybe they aren't making money. Um, for those who don't know in the door to door world, right. We basically work, you know, four months and then it's famine for the rest of the yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, helping people say, yeah, cool. You made, you know, $20,000 commissions check, you know, I'm going to, you know, let's take 5,000 of that. I'll, I'll help you understand and learn the skill set where you could bring in, you know, hundred, 200 bucks a day during yeah. the off season, which may not be a lot, but that's, that's life changing for some people. Right. right? And then vice versa, we've, we've had people, you know, get into the, the trading space and, you know, kind of be sick of their job where they're at, or, you know, be in a position where it's like, man, I need something different. And I've been able to then introduce them to, you know, the sales world where it's like, Hey, like there's pretty cool opportunities within the door to door space. So mm -hmm. they kind of work hand in hand together, which is yeah. nice. And, you know, I, I thought when I first started coming, I was like, man, I wonder like time, if it's going to take away, but the bigger we get at uncommon, the more I'm able to, you know, have people come in and help me with some of these like more logistical day to day things. So it actually frees up more of my time. Sure. Um, yeah. so I can focus on the things that can help both proof and uncommon. Yeah, that makes sense. It sounds like you're, you're straddling both pretty, pretty well and trying to, to kind of grow, <laughs> trying grow to. simultaneously. Yeah. So do you recommend for anyone getting into it that it, it, it maybe at least initially, but it's more of a side, you know, side hustle, something to uh, supplement additional income opportunities. Because to your point, if, it, if I quit my job, 
and I've got, you know, 30 grand in my bank mm -hmm. accounts, like I'm going all in on day trading. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't advise that. Correct. Okay. My, my advice, cause we have members who are, who are at that point. We, we have quite a few members at uncommon education who are making significantly more than their day jobs. Yeah. Um, and what I tell them is get consistent for one to two years. Mm -hmm. If you can consistently do that for a couple of years, then start scaling back if you want to out of your, your current job, if, if that's what your desire is. Yeah. Um, but you know, for me, it, it's, if you can do both, why not? Yeah. Right. And, and right. that's where I'm at. Like I've got lots in the tank. Um, I, I still have a passion for the sales side and, and helping train individuals to see success in door to door sales. Obviously I have a passion for the stock market, helping people invest in that sense. So as long as I have that passion for both and have the ability to do so, I have a very, very great loving wife who supports me in these ventures and, you know, takes care of, you know, we have a, a four-year-old little girl and one on the way. So she's a saint and nice. kind of helps me do, you know, both these ventures. But as long as I have a passion for both, I'm going to continue to do both and, and, you know, give them both my full time tension. Yeah. And Makes sense. Else. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, you talked about the early years, just struggling and, and, uh, having to figure out yourself, but have you had, you know, mentors or people who've influenced you, um, over the years that, that you, you know, give credit to and, and in, in hand, hand in hand with that, how important do you think having a mentor is? Yeah. Super good question. <clears throat> I thought about this cause I figured you'd ask a, a question like this and I've been very fortunate to be around, uh, a number of people who, um, are incredible mentor type figures. Um, kind of early on when I was growing up, there was um, a year right before, you know, like I said, we kind of grew up uh, lower middle class, I guess you could say. Right before that, there was a time when I was a kid, uh, my dad was an agent for Scott Mitchell. Um, he was the quarterback for the Detroit Lions. Okay. Um, he played at the University of Utah with my dad. So I grew up going to these, you know, um, Detroit Lions football games. I was, you know, sitting on Barry Sanders' lap after, you know, football games. Wow. We'd go to his house, play with his kids. So getting exposed to people like that, um, you know, when I served as a missionary, my mission president was, um, you know, uh, the Canadian uh, basketball leagues, essentially their best player, you know, he... Cool. Um, holds a number of Olympic records, uh, you know, guard Michael Jordan from the dream team. They got smoked, but um, played against him. Yeah. Just did different people like this who I feel, you know, were super successful, had incredible things to teach and, and to, and to, you know, provide me and kind of help me along my way. But I think really the best mentors and, and who I can attribute most of my success to are my parents. And I feel super lucky. I, I talked about this with my wife the other day. I'm like, man, what, like, why did I get so lucky with like my parents? Cause I feel like so many people have really difficult relationships with their parents or, you know, their parents, you know, kind of let them down in certain examples. And, you know, it was in no way perfect, but my mom, her just unwavering positive mindset, regardless of what stupid thing I was doing, regardless of like how I would act like her, just like love for me is for sure one of the biggest reasons why I am where I am today. And then from my dad who, you know, had some really cool things happen in his life and got some dealt some bad cards and had some bad things happen in his life, he always encouraged me and pushed me to to do whatever it is that I wanted to do. Um he instilled that just natural I guess belief that things can happen and it's like, hey, if it's happening, why not you, right? Yeah. And I think those two things are are what allowed me to get into um you know, day trading and, and sales with like the, the optimism that I had, yeah. because if you look at statistically speaking, right, like there, there should be no optimism. There shouldn't be a reason that I should have believed I could have succeeded at it. And I think kind of to culminate that one of my favorite books, it, it is my favorite book, um, the happiness advantage by Sean Aker. Um, it's the whole idea. It's just something I've always resonated with that you're never going to be happy at an end result. Right. If, if you're hoping that you're going to be happy when you buy that house, when you hit a hundred thousand dollars in your bank account, when you make your first million, you're going to be chasing something your whole life and you'll never be fulfilled. When in reality, the way to achieve those things is to choose to be happy now and the success will follow. And so I try to live my life that way where, you know, I look back to when I was living in our cabin with my wife, with that well water drive in a you know, beat up Ford Taurus. I just remember I'd be driving and the paint would be like chipping off the car as we were driving. 
I, I can honestly tell you, I was just as happy then as I am now driving my Porsche and just bought a TRX, you know, love them. They're sweet. But I, my happiness di hasn't changed since then. And I think that the only thing I can really attribute that to is again, the way that my parents brought me up. I love it, man. That's so good. And, and, and doing this podcast, sitting across from successful individuals like yourself, that is something that I've heard over and over and over again. It's just, you know, how you measure life, being happy in the moment, giving, giving back and, and just the journey versus the destination. Um, because even in the, in the times of struggles, I think, um, you look back with fondness on those moments. Like you just, you just said, right. Driving a crappy car, you know, maybe struggling financially, but it's like, you've got your health, you've got your family, you've got, you know, the people you love. And, and as long as those foundations are there and you can enjoy every moment, it looking back it, yeah, it's, it's always been there. It's just recognizing it at the moment. So hundred percent cool. And, uh, I I'd say for anyone who, you know, what, what attribute, I found with successful people, I'm sure you can agree to this. Um, the number one characteristic or trait that I found in successful people is gratitude. Um, people who are grateful for what they have are always the most successful because it almost, you almost feel a sense of like you're, you're in debt. Like, like you have to like, like you almost are like, I, I don't want to waste this opportunity. I don't want to waste this life. Like I've been given so much. I can't believe that I, you know, I, I'm in such a good spot. So it's like, you almost want to like return the favor to, to life almost. And so, um, you know, people who lack happiness that I've seen typically are the people who are the least grateful for what they have. And the people who have the most in life are usually the ones who are the most grateful. It's kind of just one of those backwards, backwards things. So yeah, yeah. if, if anyone is, is looking to, I don't know, develop more happiness or a new found, you know, joy out of life, like just find things to be grateful for. And it's crazy what it will do for you. Yeah, I love it, man. Abundance mentality, gratitude. Sure. It it kind of again, everyone I've I've sat with, it it always kind of comes full circle. You give more, um, you get more, you know, and just just being grateful. So that's great, dude. Um, <clears throat> last last couple of questions, Jeremy. So just in terms of starting a business, I think a lot of people listen to the show because they want to be entrepreneurs or you know start a, start a business. What would be through all your experience, a, just a piece of advice that you'd give to somebody wanting to make that jump to, to do their own thing. For sure. Um, this is super relatable to day trading as well. Um, there's never the perfect time, man. There never is. <laughs> right. No. There, there, there <laughs> never not. is. If I, if I, if I look back when I started Uncommon Education, <clears throat> I didn't have any structure in place. I was having people like Venmo me each month. My like, no, just, it was so hodgepodge, whatever, but I knew I wanted to start it. Yeah. And so what I didn't know, I just did what I, what I did know. And so if you're waiting, um, you got to stop waiting, right? Like there is never a perfect time. You can always find an excuse. And one of the, kind of, I don't know, terms I live by, or one of my favorite quotes is there are those who will find an excuse and there are those who will find a way you're one or the other. Mm -hmm. That's it. You either find an excuse or you find a way. And I try to be the person where it's like, if I want something, I'm going to find a way to do it. Um, and if you ask most successful people again, it's, they, they, they didn't wait for a perfect time. They didn't even consider what was the perfect time they just started. So the best advice to start is start you know, actually yeah. do it. Um, I, I feel like in today's world, there is a huge issue with the analysis paralysis, right? People looking at something really want to becoming a master at something before starting. You are always going to be better off by just starting and figuring things out as you go, because you can always learn and you can always improve. But if you don't actually start and take action, it doesn't matter what you know, unless you put it into action. Yeah. A hundred percent. That's something I, struggled with for a long time. I mean, I, I came out of, of BYU and felt like I needed to go work for a long time to learn and learn and learn until I could, could do my own thing and certainly benefits to that. But, um, at the end of the day, you're never going to be, you're never going to be like, I am 100%. I know everything I need to know right. about starting a business. There's always learning on the, on the go. And so that's, that's great advice, man. Well, last question I wanted to ask is just in terms of how you define success in your life. Um, you know, you've got different areas, you've got different companies you're working with. What do you, what do you think about when you think about success for, for Jeremy? I mean, what does that look like for you? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, 
so success is is different for everyone. That's one thing I found. Some people they define their success by, yeah, the amount of money they have in their bank account. Some people define their success by their status. Um, you know, some people really want to leave like a lasting legacy, like how people will view them. I think for me, um, I because I I don't you know. Like I enjoy the finer things in life. Don't get me wrong, right? I, I I just spent a weekend in probably the bougiest hotel lodge place I've ever stayed in my life, and it was awesome. But knowing that I'm just as happy, you know, living in you know like the first condo that me and my wife bought is the house we now live in. Um, I kind of have a an amount where anything beyond you know is just cool. It's it's icing on the cake. So for me, success is defined by you know am I able to do the things that I, that I want to do? Right. And, and, and I mean like truly. So, you know, if I want to go play, you know, the top 100 golf courses in the world, like can it, can I have the freedom and the financial ability to do that? Um, you know, I just got back, like I, I was saying from Columbia, it's, um, it was honestly pretty sketch <laughs> in the jungle <laughs> wild, but, but, you know, world-class fly fishing with incredible people. And I was able to go there for 10 days and, and, and go, you know, have this really cool fly fishing experience. So for me, success really is, um, am I able to first do the things that I want to do whenever I want to do it? And two is I'm just, am I spending the majority of my time with people that I want to be spending it with? Because to me, you know, I think of like uh, a surgeon for ex an example, right? I, I have families who are family members who are surgeons. I, I know people who are surgeons, but to me, if you're day to day, if you're spending 80% of your time surrounded by coworkers and people that you, you genuinely do not like, right. Doing something that you may enjoy, but with people you don't like to me, that's not true success. Right. Um, I, I talk about this 80, 20 rule i like to live by. And that's, I want to be spending 80% of my time with people that I love and people that I like doing things that I love and things that I like. And I'll, I'll spend 20%, you know, dealing with people that I may, maybe don't want to sure. be dealing with where I feel the majority of Americans are spending 80% of their time with people they don't like that aren't benefiting them in any way, shape or form. And they're spending their two weeks of vacation a year with the people they want. So that to me is, is true success is are you spending time with people that you actually want to be spending time with? And can you do things that you, you actually want to be doing whenever you want to do them? Yeah. I've heard that at the end of this life, it's really relationships, experiences and, and memories that kind of, those are the things that, that make a, a life worth living and, and really bring happiness. So you, you hit on the head, man. Well, thank you for being here, Jeremy. I'd say for anyone listening, go check out Uncommon Education Trading. Follow Jeremy on Instagram. He's a stud. Um, and looking forward to your success, man. It's been fun following you for the little bit of time that we've known each other and looking forward to seeing more. So Thanks for having me. It's been a blast. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, dude. Thanks for listening to The Chase Hudson Show. If you liked what you heard, please leave me a review and subscribe to this podcast. Reviews really help us to find better guests and to improve the overall quality of the show. If you'd like to connect with me directly or want to learn more about investing in real estate, send me a DM on Instagram at official Chase Hudson. Again, we really appreciate you listening and we'll talk to you on the next episode.